before you call to order. Good evening. I would like to call this meeting to order at uh, of the Cordova Recreation and Park District Board of Directors on Wednesday, December 16th at 6.30 p.m. There are a few readings that are going to be read prior to, just for clarification, to let everybody know. Minister Rhodes. Yes, thank you, Chair Dangel. As, uh, as Chair Dangel has noted, I have been asked to read uh, just a couple of clarifying comments um, prior to the beginning of this meeting. We've had a lot of uh, public comment and requests for information, so we wanted to clarify um, exactly what that process is. In public comment, members of the public may address the Board of Directors on general district topics during item B or on specific agenda items when the items are heard. A blue speaker card should be submitted to the clerk of the board and speakers will be called to the podium at the appropriate time. A time limit of three minutes will be observed for each speaker. Meeting recordings. Members of the public are hereby notified that meetings of the board of the directors are recorded. Requests for the audio and or video recordings may be directed to the clerk of the board and are available to the public within 72 hours of the meeting. Meeting minutes. Draft minutes are available to the public within 72 hours of the meeting and may be obtained from the clerk of the board. Only board approved minutes are posted to the district website. And with that, uh, that it concludes the um, items we have uh, at prior. Thank you, Administrator Adams. At this time, roll call. Director Yearwood. Here. Director Reyes. Here. Secretary Lineback. Here. <coughs> Vice Chair Sloan. Here. Chair Danzel. Here. If everyone would please rise and face the American flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Board disclosures at this time, does the board have any disclosures to make? Hearing Director Reyes. I guess a uh, disclosure, I had a conversation with uh, Councilman uh, Donald Terry. Simple clarification information regarding the uh, pool situation. Thank you. Um, any others? Okay, approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion? <clears throat> I move approval of the consent of the agenda. I have a, a motion by Secretary Lombach. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Director Reyes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item B. Administrator Adams, would you read that yes, once item, again for us? Item B is comments by the public on non-agenda items. Members of the public may address the board on district topics not listed on this agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes. It is a violation of state law for the board to discuss or take action on non-agenda items. Board members may only briefly ask clarifying questions or refer the matter to staff. Thank you for that, Administrator Adams. Ms. Jones, do we have any speaker cards this evening? Chair Danzel, we do have one card under general public comment. Okay. So I would like to call Gail Gifford to the podium, please. Um, good good evening. evening, distinguished uh, Cordova Park and Rec District board members. Uh, my name is Gail Gifford, and this is Tara Colvinet Bach. I always mispronounce. I perspired. We're representing the Rancho Cordova Whisker Warriors, which I'm sure many of you know about because thanks to your board, we were awarded a contract to the Park and Recreation. And this tonight, what we'd like to let you know is we were fortunate to receive our grant from the city of Rancho Cordova, which provided our group, which we are called a TNR group, and that's trap, neuter, and return of feral cats. And since that, we have started this program. We took over from all of you know Scotty Moore from SOX. We have trapped, neutered, vaccinated, defleed, dewormed, and returned. There were 12 cats, there were four that were kittens, and they were all placed up for adoption through assistance through animal outreach, which we were very, very grateful for. Tonight, we, 
as our group we are representing. We would like to express our humble thanks to all of the CRPD employees for their assistance, your support, and believing in what we are doing in all of our projects. Our partnership is a community effort, and partnership is a win for all of Rancho Cordova. A special thank you we would like to give to Horatio Hernandez and John Swartz. They have been wonderful. They, their hard work, their volunteer of hours in building the new feral cat enclosure and the placement, we were very, very happy to participate in. They were tireless in their labor, intensive, stayed in contact with me at all times on this project. The, all of this, all of us, including the city and everyone in Rancho Cordova is very, very, just, we're just so thankful and the gratitude. And we appreciate seconds, the Rancho Cordova city for the voices that cannot speak. We speak for them and we thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gifford. Any questions for Ms. Gifford? No questions. No. Thank, thank you, you for much. your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Any others at this time, Ms. John? Not at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Let's move on to item C, consent calendar. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Danzel. Uh, consent items are considered routine and are intended to be acted upon in one motion without discussion. During this portion of the meeting, the consent calendar will be read aloud. Prior to the approval, the chair will give the board, staff, and public the opportunity to pull any item for discussion. The remaining calendar will be acted upon. Any pulled items will then be heard and acted upon individually. With that, we have a total of five items for you this evening. Item C1 is to approve minutes of the meeting of the Board of Directors of 10 21 2015. Item C2 is to accept and file minutes from the School District 2x2 Standing Committee uh, with Folsom Cordova Unified School District on 8 13 15. District wide monthly financial, item C3 is district wide monthly financial statement for October 2015. Item C4 is to adopt resolution 15 backslash 16 33 and ratify payroll for November 2015 for a total of $296,473.84. Item C5 is a resolution 15 backslash 16 34, amending the full time and part time salary and hourly rate scales as required by California Code of Regulations, section 570.5. And that is the sum total of this evening's consent calendar. Thank you, Administrator Rodems. Um, at this time, is there any item that would like to be pulled by the, the public? Hearing none, I will move on to staff. Is there any by the staff that needs to be pulled this evening? Any from the board? Chair Denzel, I would like to pull consent calendar C1 and C2. C1 and C2? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Make notes of that. Okay. <clears throat> Here, is there any others? Hearing, hearing no others, do I hear a motion to approve items C3, 4, and 5? I'll move that we approve consent calendar items C3, C4, and C5. I have a motion by Director Reyes. Do I hear a second? I have a second by Vice Chair Sloan. All those in favor, roll call vote. Director Yearwood? Aye. Director Reyes? Aye. Secretary Lineback? Aye. Vice Chair Sloan? Aye. And Chair Danzel? Aye. Thank you. Let's move back to item C1. Director Reyes, you had this item pulled? Yes, just for clarification, um, with the uh, minutes for the meeting of October 21st, I was reading it and there was just uh, a statement that I needed to be clear on uh, that um, on page eight, Administrator Rodems had made the co comments or statements and the only thing that I needed to See if it was properly reflected here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the ninth dot, the district has previously borrowed three million from the city for park projects and showed accountability and transparency through that process. And I was not sure if it was a borrowed amount or if it was a park renovation uh, setting where we don't 
borrow and pay back. So what what is the situation? Did I let me, understand? Let me clarify. That statement should have been that we've, we have uh, successfully uh, accessed and received the park uh, renovation fees that have been in existence since about 2005, I do believe, 2006 in that, in that area, for in excess of uh, $3 million for multiple projects throughout the district. So I'd like to make sure that that is noted and amended uh, before we can approve Unfortunately, it. I have to record exactly what was stated, and that's what was stated. But in the minutes for tonight's meeting, I'll have a note that that was clarified by Administrator Rodums. Okay. Yes, because big difference being borrowed and accessed. Okay. That's all for C1. Okay. So at this time, do I have a motion to approve item C1? I'll move that we approve item C1 from the consent calendar. Or, um, yes. Uh, what is this? <laughs> yeah, consent, consent calendar. calendar. Sorry, I was right. I have a, I have a motion by Dr Director Yearwood. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. I have a second by Vice, Vice Chair Sloan. All those in favor, roll call vote. Director Yearwood? Aye. Director Reyes? Aye. Secretary Lambach? Aye. Vice Chair Sloan? Aye. And Chair Danzel? Aye. Motion passes. Item C2, Director Reyes, you had this item also pulled tonight? Yes, this has uh, has to do with the uh, minutes for the two-by-two two committees, and it's just clarification here. Um, my question here where it was CRPD presented the very first, number one, first uh, item here, CRPD presented photos of damage and preliminary estimate for repairs from Sierra Asphalt, which is a 39,000 claim. Uh, and so my question is, I mean, it was presented. Was it accepted? Was it acknowledged? Was, what's, what are we, what's the outcome? Um, the outcome of that item is that we've turned that back over to park maintenance to discuss with uh, the uh, facilities uh, manager for uh, Folsom Cordova. There, there are monies owed back and forth. So whatever we do there will be balanced against that as we speak. So. Um, they've agreed that there are damages that they need to compensate us for, but we also are paying for some trenching and some other work that they've done as part of their project. And we'll look to balance that out in whatever uh, <clears throat> whatever monies change hand overall, and we'll show an accounting of that to the board. Thank you. Any other questions on item C2? Yes. Uh, in number three, where we're establishing a Rio del Oro joint use authority, just wanted to try and understand... Um, the setting here. We're establishing a Rio del Oro joint use authority between the school, the city, and the and the park, or? The initial discussion about the joint use authority in Rio del Oro has to do with any excess property the city has adjacent to this facility. And then also what the city may believe, uh, both the city and the school district believe they need to have in the facility and how the funding of those mechanisms would occur and what access would occur. So the issue really comes from the expanded use of this site, how, it, uh, how it's being programmed from the school district side, what their expectations are, what the city is looking at as expectations for a gathering spot, uh, and then where will the compensation for development, maintenance, and or operating be acquired. Uh, so the, the, the idea of a joint use for this property has more to do with multiple parties owning different parts adjacent to and also asking for facilities on that property. And once again, there's a significant amount of open space being assigned to this park as well that's being lumped in, which brings uh, our discussion with the city and, and how they want to develop their open space in conjunction with this whole area. So the discussion about a joint use authority over this property has to do with the fact that separate entities have uh, separate pieces uh, that they're going to be responsible for, and we have to figure out where all the funding mechanisms come and what that needs to look like. We would do that jointly. So this is for the Rio del Oro, the, the community park? The or item that we're discussing. The large piece? Is it the, yeah, it would the be hundred the large piece. acre? Yeah, it's just shy. Kind it's of, like 98. Uh, yeah, but this is for that, the, the hope where we correct. would have another community center, correct. the aquatics, et cetera, et cetera. That's the big piece of property. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other questions on item C2? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? I'll move that we accept uh, that we accept uh, consent calendar C2. I have a motion by Director Reyes. You're here a second. Second. I have a sec second by Secretary Leinbach. All those in favor, roll call vote. Director Yearwood? Aye. Director Reyes? Aye. Secretary Leinbach? Aye. Vice Chair Sloan? Aye. And Chair Danzel? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, folks. Let's move on to item D, presentations. Thank you, Chair Danzel. Tonight we have two presentations, and we're very excited to finally bring to the board uh, presentation D1. This is a presentation by Page Design on the district website. This is an informative presentation. Only no action will be taken by the board. And with that, I will introduce Vivian Kazan. Good evening. I'd like to welcome Paul Page from Page Design and Brett Thurman. Um. Thank you very much. Um, we we'll want to uh, thank you for for all being so great to work with. Uh, we started this project uh, in the summer of 2015. We've been working with Becca Niles and Vivian Kazanzas, and uh, they've really enabled the project to work well. In order for a website to work well, it has to uh, you have to gather and plan. And the first part of our project was having meetings with all the stakeholders. We met with all of you as well, and that was all very helpful getting your input. We met with the staff, the, the parks, the maintenance, recreation, sports field, uh, planning, and uh, we also had a survey of the people who used the website. And uh, after gathering all that information, we were able to put together a site map, and Brett's going to show you this um, incredible little spider web of a site map that, that we created that uh, is going to enable this website to do a lot of the things your current website doesn't currently uh, do. And, and the most important thing, uh, which you're not going to see, it's behind the scenes, is a content management system that you're going to be able to easily and effortly, effortlessly add pages, add content, add calendar items, and um, the, uh, uh, we're using a WordPress platform, and uh, Becca's real excited about the work she's going to be able to do for that. Uh, after that, once you get all of that planning in place, and, and believe me, we worked really hard on the site map, went back and forth with, with Becca and Vivian and everybody who looked at it. Uh, once that was done, we entered the design phase, and uh, that's where we were before. What we have here is, is a mock-up of the home page <clears throat> and um, your new home page, Brett, maybe you want to scroll down a little bit. Uh, all of those items there are live items, meaning that as uh, soon as something's entered to your calendar, it changes on the calendar. The social media news feed changes immediately as there's new social media on it. Uh, the events, what's happening that you see, the news items, all of those will change on a daily basis. This will be a place to come and get current information. It will not be a staid website. <clears throat> the uh, navigation up top, I don't have any controls over here, so <laughs> it's like uh, Brett's the puppet guy controlling me. <clears throat> um, we, we'll have a drop down menu. Uh, this is not a live website, but we're just sort of making it look live. So a person that on the website from the home page will be able to get to almost exactly where he wants to get with one click. So uh, Brett's gone over the parks and facilities, and you can see all the different choices that you'll have to get right where you want to be. Um, go next. So the parks and facilities page uh, will show you the kind of uh, facilities or parks that you could uh, choose. You see parks, sports centers, recreation centers. Um, go ahead and click. Oh, OK, go down. That's good. There, there it is. OK, it's all on the same page. Now, people find parks in different ways. Uh, in interview, our surveys showing the people who've used your websites. Now, sometimes it's like, well, I know there's this park down the street, but I don't know the name of it. There is our map, and that map will show all your parks with little pins, and you find out where you are. Yeah, that's the park I want. You mouse over it, boom, up will come that little uh, name. And then uh, if you go in park details, that will take you to the park page, which we'll go to in a second. 
Other times people say, well, I know we want to meet over at uh, Alston Park and say, okay, where's that? Well, on the side there, there's all the names of all your parks. You can find them alphabetically. It's got a little slider toggle because there's too many parks to get uh, all the way uh, showing. Uh, up in the top above the map, you say, well, I need a park where we have basketball courts. I need a car park where we have tennis courts, a picnic area, a swimming pool. You can find the park uh, with those icons up above based on features. So, uh, for instance, if you were to click on, which one are you on there, Brett? Okay, click there and uh, then the, uh, uh, the map will change and only show facilities that have the feature you're interested in. So it's going to be a really nice uh, way for people to find parks and access them. Um, where do we go next then, Brett? Okay. Individual park page. Again, when you go to all parks, you will see all parks in this grid that we see uh, on and on and on. But up at the top, again, I want a park with a softball field or uh, whatever. Then, then you'll click on that and it will immediately filter down and only show you the uh, parks with those features. Now the parks, the little squares there have real nice pretty pictures and if you mouse over them, like uh, right now it's demonstrating that the Alstrom Park has, uh, uh, it shows the address. So immediately you'll get the address and if you click on that, then you will go to that park page. Now you already have a park page uh, in your website. But uh, now you're going to have a new one that's going to be a lot more photo friendly. Uh, there'll be a big picture showing there and you see the little gallery underneath. You know, click on one of those pictures and you'll be able to toggle through an entire gallery. There will be a map on every page showing you right away uh, approximately where it is and then you uh, can click and get directions to the park. All the basic information about the park is, is shown there. The park amenities are shown with icons. If there are fields to rent or facilities to rent, they're listed there with the prices. And again, these are things that the staff will be able to change at a moment's notice. Oop, we're raising the price of softball fields. No problem. You'll just log into the content management system, change the price, and uh, there it is. Or you add a new feature. Log in, change it, add a new park. Anything you want to do, you'll be able to do with the tools that we're going to set you up with and train you with. Um, we done with parks now? Uh, classes and programs, probably another big user part, uh, very important user part of the, um, the site. Same thing, uh, you're going to see these pictures with types of programs. You see the one you want, whether it's uh, specialty camps or aquatics or teens, and you click on that, and then you will go and get information. Where do we go from here, Brad? Here. Okay, so we clicked on teen programs, and this is a teen program page. Now the calendar, that's a beautiful thing, the calendar that we're going to give you can be tagged. So you put things one after the other after the other into the calendar, but you tag things as teen programs or aquatic programs. So when the teen program page comes up, you'll only see items in the calendar that have to do with upcoming teen programs. Um, so that's basically what the uh, home page for the teen program is going to look like. <clears throat> now how to register, we're, we're not demonstrating. No. Okay, you, you currently use and will still use a system called Active to register for um, your, your programs that you want to participate in. And right now, you're on the teen page and you're all excited about a specialty camp and you click on register and then you go to Active and you have to find it all over again. Uh, the nice thing about this new system is that if you're on the teen page and you go to register, um, you will go to a section that is specifically for teen programs. So it's going to save that duplicate, duplicative step of you know, finding it on the website, then going to active, then finding it again. So uh, that'll be another enhancement that, uh, that we'll be able to give. <clears throat> um, 
This is just an example of a uh, text-heavy page. There's a, there's a lot of content in your website, and there will continue to be a lot of content. This is a page, for instance, for about uh, the district. And then the board of directors page, you have a um, transparency certification and our new board of directors page, and you're kind of ghosts there because we don't have your pictures yet, but your pictures will be in place with um, all the information needed so that you do satisfy the transparency certification uh, on the board of directors page. <clears throat> Um, we, as part of our discovery on the process, we, we met with the planning and development people, and, and they really felt slighted by the, the current website, that there wasn't anything to, uh, to show their new projects. And it turns out that map that you uh, got to see earlier to show you where all the parks are now, uh, with filtration and layers, we can also add parks to come. And we can add them, noted whether they're in construction or in planning or various stages. Again, just with layers and filters. So uh, as this part of the, the, the site grows, you'll be able to uh, have ongoing information about what's new and what's coming <clears throat> with, uh, with new parks and new construction. And, and even existing parks that are already open, you can have uh, wording here about what construction projects are being done. Is that the uh, end of it? So those are sort of the features, the highlights of what's coming with the new website. Uh, it's uh, on target, we're, we're on, on time and on schedule, and uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to launch. Thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> Other questions? Director Song? I have a question, Paul. Sure. Um, on the top of it, it said search. Is that a, uh, if, you, if I click on that, is that a uh, one of those where you can, I'm just one a yoga class. Is there a place where you can type in and then search and then that will go to it? Or? It will search the, it's the entirety of the site. So it will, any page that would mention yoga, it will pop up. But it, it won't search ActiveNet directly. So you, would you click on that? The, the magnifying glass, and then it will give you a, a box to type yes. something in? Yes. Okay. Yeah, a box will pop up. We didn't really want to take up the real estate with a box until it was needed, but right. it, it's real easy to have that box form as soon as somebody uh, clicks on search. Because I, mean, I know that a lot of people, they get freaked out by the navigation part of it. Sure. Go here, then go here, then go here, which is simple, but they just want to say, I want senior yoga class, and they want to go there. Yeah, we, we find that as good a feature as that is, and it's going to be a really good feature, that people use it a lot, uh, statistics show people use it a lot less than you would think. It's there, but we've also tried to be a lot more intuitive. You saw like with the icons on the park, so you can find your tennis court real easy that way, or you can find it on a map, or you can find it by the name. And the programs are kind of the same way. They'll have, they have icons and a lot of breadcrumbs and ways to find them, including the search. It'll, it'll be there, and it should be very robust, so. Great, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, let's move on to item D2. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, item D2 uh, is a presentation on the Cordova Community Pool. This is an informative presentation only, and no action will to be taken by the Board of Directors. And I will introduce Laura Taylor. <clears throat> While they load the presentation. Good evening, Ms. Taylor. Are you there? Pardon? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. OK. <laughs> OK, we are very pleased to be able to give the board of directors, as well as the community at large, an update on the Cordova Community Pool Project. Every department has touched this project in some way or another in the past 18 months that we've been 
pulling together a renovation project. So I wanted to say thanks to all the department heads and, and their staff for helping us. Um, Christina James is the project manager, uh, and she's here to help um, address any questions and comments that you folks might have at the end of this presentation. And um, our consultant, uh, Rich Young from um, Aquatic Commercial Consulting, unfortunately got stuck in traffic and will not be able to be here. But the good news is, is that I have some of his talking points, so I think we'll be able to address um, a number of questions that might come up on that. So to keep it short, let's see, to uh, advance this thing. Okay, so to keep it short, I'm not gonna re reiterate everything that we've done on this project. Much of what we have done was clearly stated in the town hall meeting that we had on August 27th. The project was advertised for bid 21 days after that town hall meeting. And so for this presentation, I'm gonna start with the October 22nd bid opening. The bid submittals were closely reviewed by me, Christina, Diane Robinson with Recreation, Rich Young, and our district legal counsel. Um, the total contract cost uh, with the additive alternates added would be $3,978,839. The base bid project is approximately, approximately $3 million, and the combined three additive alternates are $1 million. And I'll talk a little bit about those later on in the presentation. Once we had firm numbers to work with, then the district was able to go on um, refining its financing plan for the project. And so we anticipate in the, in the January meeting um, bringing a final financing plan as well as the uh, recommendation to award the bid to Tricon Aquatics at the January meeting. Although throughout this presentation, I'm, I'll talk about this project as if the contract will be awarded, please know that I fully respect the authority of the board to make that final decision in January. Okay, so a little bit about the successful design build team. Tricon Aquatics is the general contractor and they have teamed up with Two Rivers Architects um, out of Folsom um, to lead the design process. Two Rivers is an award-winning architecture firm with over 30 years of experience. Um, one of the interesting things in their submittals was that they completed the Shasta Union High School pool modernization, which saved over 60% in life cycle costs. They've completed multiple public sector projects, and they have experience finding creative solutions within budgets. Tricon Aquatics also has over 30 years of experience building aquatic facilities throughout California. In their bid submittal, over the past 10 years, they submitted 44 public pool projects that they've worked on. And that doesn't include other projects that weren't public projects that they've worked on. Their proposal was deemed by the team to be the most responsive in meeting the district schedule as well as other criteria in the RFP. Some of their recent projects include California State University's Stanislaus New Competition Swimming Pool, the San Francisco State University Public Pool, the Sacramento Charter High School Pool Renovation, Winter High School Swimming Pool Complex, and the Monterey Sports Center Natatorium. These two teams have teamed up before, most recently for a $3 million complex at the Bret Hart Union High School, which was completed on time and within budget. Okay, 18 months ago, the district embarked upon this renovation project with these goals, to restore all three pools to full function. We wanted to bring the, the three pools in the facility up to current code, we wanted to upgrade the pool mechanical and chemical systems, increase the play opportunities for youth with zero entry and splash pads added around the recreational pool. We wanted to increase the recreational space immediately adjacent to the pools by relocating the mechanical room and do all of this within only having the pool be closed for one season.
This is um, a, the a plan that was in the RFP, a diagram of the existing facility. And um, if you can see my cursor on the screen, that would be great. Uh, this is the existing diving pool. This is the existing competitive pool. And then this is the uh, recreation and training pool. Additive alternate number one in our project is adding a zero entry to the recreation pool. Additive alternate number two was relocating the mechanical building from the existing location to a new location away from the central core of the facility. And additive alternate number three was adding a splash pad. This is an illustrative concept of what the project could look like um, as we go through the design process. But of course, it's not going to be determined until we get through that design process. But this demonstrates how the extent of concrete surrounding the pools could certainly be reduced and enhanced with landscape planters, which gives us the opportunity to soften it up, to add trees for shade, um, and do some nice things with the project. The other thing this diagram illustrates is one way of achieving the accessibility um, uh, path of travel is to put in some ramps between where the um, levels of the concrete change throughout the facility. They drop down as you go. This is a picture of the splash pad that is the additive alternate number three. And it has um, interactive features that uh, are triggered by an activation device that is over here. So that adds a, a, little, a level of playability and, and fun for, for the kids. This is a um, summary of the schedule that was included with the bid submittal for the successful bidder. And um, what I'd like to point out is um, it has some overlap of tasks, especially starting with the demolition, which would begin at the time as we're submitting the final construction drawing to the agencies for permitting. And with the overlap of uh, some of the task, it allows the project to be completed with the 180 days um, calendar requirement uh, as far as our um, RFP required. The other thing that I want to call your attention to is that at the beginning of the schedule, there is just under eight weeks of design time um, from the preliminary design and review through design development. And it's during that stage, during those first two months, that all the decisions about what will get included it, with this contract gets made and incorporated into the final construction documents. It's also the time at which we decide which things make sense to incorporate now, which things we can easily add later. One thing I'd also like to say that because we're utilizing the existing pool configuration and because we have had a lot of public um, input, the programming for this facility is fairly easy. If we were to scrap the renovation project and start all over with a brand new facility and we would be looking at a different configuration of the pools, we would also have to start over with some public outreach as well as programming, which would add a significant amount of time to the project. Not to mention the fact that in a traditional design, bid, build project, um, just to bring on another design consultant would add several months to the project just for the whole RFP process, et cetera. So just to summarize the public outreach um, that we've done <coughs> so far is that in, uh, since June of 2013, we've conducted three publicized town hall meetings and we've met with Blue Marlin representatives. This board meeting provides another opportunity for public input. 
And part of the contract will be that during the design development phase, the district will work with the Two Rivers Architects to host a community meeting to explain more detail about the project as well as gather additional public input. So district staff has been listening to the things that the um, community has been telling us about what they would like this facility to include. Diane has been keeping a list of things that she's gotten from the Blue Marlins and from other community members. And so we have here a list of uh, 23 things. We've kind of condensed some of the requests were uh, duplicates of, of each other. And so as we embark upon the design process, we're going to address every single one of these items. And during that design process, we will figure out, um, does it make more sense to include that in the base contract that we're talking about right now, or can they be easily added later? What do we need to do to make sure that we can accommodate those things if, in fact, we determine that a, a later installation is a better way to go? Another thing that I'd like to touch on is that recently there have been comparisons between the district's renovation project and a brand new facility. And so we researched some costs. We were given the 1999 budget for the Lemby Aquatic Center in Folsom. The base project over there, it has three pools, and um, that base project did not include the cost, the classroom that was added later, but it did include the buildings that are right at the entry of that facility. So in today's dollars with inflation, that project could very well cost $7.4 million. So that project was built on raw ground. And um, if, if we were to construct a brand new facility in the same place as the Hagen Cordova pool, we would have to also add to a new facility the cost of complete removal and disposal of the existing facility and its components. Um, and so another thing that's interesting to consider is that the daily admission fee at the Lemby facility is $7 a person. The daily admission fee at Cordova is $2. And you know that speaks somewhat to operation costs. OK. Um, this is the point at which I was going to turn it over to Rich Young, our consultant from um, Aquatic Commercial Consulting. The good news is, is that I do have some of his talking points he was able to, to give to me, and so I can make, I can make those points. Um, the other thing is, depending on what kinds of questions are brought up, it might be that some of the other department heads uh, can chime in, recreation might chime in or whatever. Um, and of course, Christina has uh, intimate knowledge of all of the documents that have been prepared and has, um, she's also got a little bit more information from him um, as we were preparing to make this presentation after we heard that he was stuck in traffic and could not get here. But I did want to talk a little bit about why we chose um, Aquatic Commercial Consulting. So in December of 2013, the district invited three commercial pool consulting firms to submit proposals with their qualifications. Aquatic Design Group, Watershape Consulting Incorporated, and Aquatic Commercial Consulting. ACC was selected. The selection committee determined that Mr. Young not only had technical expertise, but very relevant personal experience. He has been active in aquatic programs, both as a participant and as an instructor. Before going into the private sector, he worked as an aquatic director at a school district and at a city. We felt that Mr. Young was uniquely qualified to evaluate the feasibility of this renovation project. And in fact, that was one of the first questions we asked. Please tell us whether this project, this um, facility is worth renovating or whether we should start from scratch. We started out with that question. 
Um, we felt that Mr. Young uh, could also make programming recommendations and that because of his experience as a director managing these facilities that he would have um, very good knowledge about the maintenance and operations and, and so we were very happy to um, work with him. In 1992, ACC was formed to fill the need for credible current information for those organizations that were attempting to renovate older community pools constructed in the 50s and 60s. And he, uh, Rich Young has consulted on over 100 facilities throughout the West. And he is also contracted to provide the district with review and assistance throughout the design, construction and the final acceptance of this project. So I do have a few notes. Um, uh, I really wish he was here to speak, but he's not. But I do happen to have a few notes. I'll kind of go over some of those things that he, that he provided me with. And um, then we'll open it up for questions. So in, in his opinion, the design-build approach, when done correctly, can provide a more cost-effective, efficient project and give the owner more control over the final project. This, it can also streamline and shorten a project's overall schedule. Because this project is a renovation project, it was very well suited for a design-build. To develop an RFP and navigate the selection process for an architectural and engineering firm, it's timely and costly. And that adds a whole nother process to our schedule. Okay. Lastly, in many cases, the owner often loses some control and design process and the architect will often design their ideas of what should be. He has an example of a um, local successful design build project, which is the Cameron Park Community Services District Pool, which is now over five years old. Initially, Cameron Park spent $90,000 on design, and they did not like the end result. Initially, they, they bid it anyways, and the, and the project bid at $2.7 million. The staff then made the decision to move forward with a design build project. There were some bridge documents or an RFP that was, formed, that was created that cost $10,000 and the project bid at $1.9 million. So there was, an, there was over $700,000 in savings <laughs> for that project. As far as the design build approach, the qualifications and capabilities of many of the public and institutional contractors include careful assessment of the existing facility, design and construction of the facility without the additional cost and time for a long design phase. Even still, this project would have an architect as part of the design phase. The contractors can solicit several equipment suppliers and manufacturers for equipment that meets the standards set on the competitive, competitive bid situation and they will usually reduce the cost by 10 to 15 percent. The Cordova Community Pool has serviced the community for decades, offering three pools that provided for a number of recreation aquatic venues. The decision to keep the pool vessels was both a monetary and a function decision. The existing pools are in fine shape and would be very costly to demolish and replace, and that would add over $900,000 to the project. By keeping the original pool shells in their location and renovating and updating the pools to, to today's industry standards, the facility will become a premier regional facility, offering even more to the community than before.
One of the things that we also looked at was um, the fact that right now there are six 50 meter pools within 25 miles of this facility. And so that speaks to um, the feasibility of if you build a brand new facility with a 50 meter pool, how likely is it that you will recoup your cost in conducting tournaments and things like that? So um, I'm going to go ahead. Christina followed up with uh, Rich on a few other uh, comments, and I'm going to let her uh, speak to those, and then we'll turn it over for questions. Okay. Um, so I'm Christina James. I'm a park planner with the district. Um, and one of the questions that came up in earlier meetings was how much of the bottom of the pools need to be removed. Um, in a presentation done by Aquatic Design Group, they were showing the majority of the bottom of the pools being removed. Um, that's not the case. Uh, the portion of the bottom of the pools that will need to be removed include where um, the new plumbing needs to be um, and where the new drains go. And there's some flexibility in terms of um, drainage, uh, the new drains being smaller and having some side drains and bottom drains. Um, another question that came up is the what is the lifespan of the proposed renovation versus, say, if we had a new center? Um, and Rich's uh, comments, uh, his answer in response to that was that um, you know there's a renovation doesn't mean a shorter life. A renovation, like you think of historical building renovation, you're you're replacing it with new materials. So. Um, this building could go another 40, 60 years with the improvements that are being proposed in this design build. So I think we'd like to open it up to any questions. And I also want to add that all of the documents that went out as part of the request for proposals are on our website. So if anyone has any interest in looking at the evaluation that ACC did, um, if they want to see the proposed plans, the specifications for the design build, all of that is published online on crpd.com. Great. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Thank you, Christina. At this time, um, I would like to go to our public comment. I do need to remind everyone that we are going to be very strict on that three minutes because I know there is a lot of cards tonight, and I would like to definitely get through all of them versus having to t turn around and put a limit on how many cards we we do do, we have done that before in the past, so please make sure that when you are speaking, the 10th person doesn't say the same thing that the other nine already said. Okay, but we will be very strict on that and I will give you a one minute and a 30 second warning. Thank you. Ms. Jones. Chair Danzel, at this time I have eight speaker cards. First, I'd like to call to the podium Susan Roa. Hello, my Good name is Rowe. Susan Roa, and um, I live out in Anatolia, and um, my family and I moved in in 2005 with the good old boom of all the housing builds, so we've uh, been around for a while and been watching what's going on in the building, how, how it happens, and um, we've watched the growth for the past 10 years, and I'm learning how long it really does take to develop something. And we're still waiting for a grocery store that was expected um, like 15 years ago by the Mather community. Um, and I think um, it's finally going to happen. I saw a surveyor out there, so that's good. But what I'm trying to say is I, I'm seeing how long it takes for something to really happen. And I know. Um, there's been talk of this great new aquatics facility, but I also know that it's going to take a whole lot longer than, um, than expected. And um, I've been to meetings about the park in Anatolia that has not been built yet, and it seems like it was a couple years ago, and I remember putting an in input and voting and um, coming back to the community and saying, this is what's going on. And then us saying, well, no, we really don't want that fence there. Or, you know, we would like this. And I don't feel like that has really been done for this pool. Um, it, 
it seems to me that this new pool, the new aquatic center, wouldn't be built for at least, at least 15 years because I live there and I know how the houses are going up and how many houses have to be built and the roads and et cetera, et cetera. And I really feel like that this pool needs to be um, flexible but done well. And I, I like the way that you know, your picture and everything was, but how can we have this top-notch, nice, renovated pool with old bathrooms? With old bathrooms. I want to see a great multi-purpose facility that's great for water polo, for swim, for play, for seconds. lessons. But I would really appreciate it if you would just pause and make sure that you really have a good plan for everybody and that you do go to the community and ask them what they would like. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be here tonight speaking because I do not like doing this if I didn't really, really care. And um, I really think it's important that... Um, Time is raw. I really like you to reevaluate and do what's truly best for all of the community. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Ms. Rowe. Next, I would like to call Joyce Higdon to the podium. Following Ms. Higdon will be Tammy Sherratt. Good evening, Ms. Higdon. Good evening. Um, my name is Joyce Higdon. I've been a citizen of Rancho Cordova for 25 years. In these past few weeks, I've heard more than one board member comment that focusing so much attention and resources on the community pool at Hagen Park would not be fair to the remainder of the park district. For some reason, some of you have the opinion that only citizens that live in Old Rancho frequent the park and use its resources. I'm here to give you some facts in order to make an informed decision. My family has been involved with Cordova Blue Marlins since 1997. This past season, we had 182 kids on the team. Only 48% of the kids on the team live in Old Rancho. That means 52% live in the other areas of the Cordova Park District. 15% drive from Mather, and aver their average trip is 7.12 miles one way. 22% of those Children drive in from Anatolia and their trip averages 8.12 miles one way. The remaining families drive an average of nine miles from areas in Sacramento as far east as Stockton Boulevard down to Calvine Road. I'm confident that if CRPD ran reports in their database, they would find similar results for many of their programs like swim lessons, sports programs, etc. And that doesn't take into account the 4th of July Easter egg hunt trick or trunk or other programs that draw thousands to the area. We're asking you today to reject the proposal, revisit the scope, listen to what the citizens of the Cordova Recreation and Park District are asking for, and build this pool the right way so we can all be proud. Let's bring Hagen Park and the community pool back to the gym it once was. I will close by giving you just one more thing to think about. When my daughter was swimming for the Marlins back in the 1990s, one minute, Ms. Higdon. the pool was already broken and in need of repairs. That was 19 years ago. Do you wonder why we have doubts when you tell us that there's a new aquatic center to be built later? Or additions to the pool can be added later? We've heard that same line regarding the repair of Hagen Pool. With all due respect, later is now. Thank you, Ms. Higdon. Jones. Next, I'd like to call Tammy Sherratt to the podium. Following Ms. Sherratt will be Ms. Jill Voss. Good evening. Um, I'm also with the Blue, as a parent of the Blue Marlins. And I just wanted to say, I live outside of Rancho. I live in the Sacramento, so I am one of your other families of your parks district. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that the pool, whether it's refurbished, rebuilt, whatever, is, you know, I've heard different things here and there um, of patchwork being done possibly, and I just hope it's done right 
So it will bring the people in. So we can raise it to more than $2 and be worth people's time to come. Um, but I'm afraid if we just fix the pool, don't fix the ground cover. You know, I know you're talking about ground coverage, but if we don't fix the cement and redo it and we don't fix bathrooms, people aren't going to come. Um, that's huge. That's part of the whole. And I just want to make sure that we put it, if it has to be put on hold to make sure it's done right the first time, let's do it. It sounds like more money's coming in than was here. And if we could add those monies together with Parks and Rec and the city as a whole to make it grand, that would be awesome for everyone in the Parks and Rec whole community. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Ms. Jones? Next, I'd like to call Jill Voss to the podium, please. Following Ms. Voss will be Mr. Dan Lynch. I have some guests with me. <laughs> it's my daughter and my niece. Um, good evening. My name is Jill Voss, and I lived in the Anatolia community for the past 10 years. And um, my three kids have been a part of the Blue Marlins for the past eight seasons. Um, I'm here because I recently became, became a part of this group of citizens, otherwise known as the Dream Team, to um, vision and dream about the pool project. And I keep coming back to the mission statement that's on the website and the agenda of every single meeting, which is to create and maintain excellent leisure facilities and recreation programs that inspire and illuminate the human spirit. And the current project, it, the picture looks great, and it's leading that way, but um, we still would like to see those new bathrooms and some of those other amenities. Um, at your most recent special meeting, looking at financing options to fund the pool, you listened to options about attaining a $4 million loan versus bonds to fund the project, and $4 million will get water in the pools, but it will not be that excellent facility that we're really wanting. In order to accomplish a truly remarkable facility, I would like to advocate that you work with the city in order to obtain additional funds needed not only to fix the current facility, but improve and upgrade the facility. The extra three million and possibly more would go a long way to give our community what it really needs. The additional funds from the city should be used to enhance the current project and not used to pay off loans or not used to decrease the amount of loans that you would have to borrow for this facility. Um, the most recent phone survey that's on your website um, from September, it says that from the three zones that were um, phoned, uh, polled in this survey, that 77% had a positive support for upgrading and maintaining the public pools. Um, One minute, Ms. Voss. Thank you. In the master plan for the COPD posted on the website, it is stated that there is a necessity for the park board and the city to work together on the pool project. From page six, both the city and the district should work together to secure funding to renovate the existing park system where adequate funding methods are not in place, especially high cost renovations such as the Cordova community pool. In the city's general plan on page seven of section seven policy OSPT 1.5 expresses the desire to support the CRPD in the construction and maintenance of recreational facilities. Um, the city and the park board have worked together in the past and we would like that fine tradition to continue. And because I'm running out of time, my son will be coming up here to um, illustrate my last point. And so we'll be back up here in a second with him. Thank you for your time, Ms. Well. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call on Mr. Dan Lynch to the podium. Following Mr. Lynch will be Mason Voss. Good evening, Mr. Lynch. How are you, sir? We got to stop meeting like this, guys. Yeah, yes, sir, we do. <laughs> No, we, I really, honestly, I do appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the presentation. Um, by the way, the website, new website, looks great. I like the, I like the existing one, so, but it looks really awesome. Good stuff. Um, really trying to put my thoughts together. I, I want to say that what, what I feel like the CRPD started in 2012 with it was the process of fixing the pool. And I think we have the opportunity to renew the entire facility because of the city's offer. Um, and, I, and that's why I'm gonna request that 
you know, in January, the board reject the current plan and revisit the scope uh, to include all the necessary items, including restrooms, perimeter fencing, and, and any other potential items. And in so doing, reclaim that, that gem, because Hagen Park is, is awesome, but it needs renewing, right? And, and we don't want to do it halfway. And I think that's our concern. Um, by not revisiting that scope, I could see us potentially paying two times for the restrooms. If we just do ADA upgrades and come back in another two to five years when we get more funding to rebuild the restrooms, now we've just paid for it twice. The same could be true for perimeter fencing, because I'm sure there's going to be some perimeter fencing renewal or revisit, re revisions to do with the current plan. However, that's not a brand new fence all the way around it. So by stepping back and just kind of revisiting it with a new dollar amount, we can actually gain a greater value. Um, I did a little play on the schedule, all right? This is just kind of the way I do it here, but, but it's looking like, you know, based on what timelines were put on the, on the website back uh, kind of in the summer, looks like we have uh, potential co uh, construction starting in May. I'm thinking something like that is kind of the way it, it pencils out. Um, if, we, if we take a, a breather, right, I could see uh, stepping back and maybe construction starting even possibly by October of next year. Is it possible that could happen by the next swim season we could get the construction going? Yeah, possible. Is it possible we miss the 2017 36, season? 30 seconds, Mr. Lunch. It's possible we miss the 2017 season. But I think to have the gem of Hagen Park renewed and really feel like we've done a good job at this point, I think that would almost be worth it. Again, I'll reiterate. My, uh, my request is that the, the CRPD board reject the current plan, revisit the scope, and uh, reclaim that the gem of Hagen Park. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Ms. Jones. Next, I'd like to call to the podium Mason Voss. Following Mr. Voss will be Ms. Mary Nessel. Good evening, Mason. Hi, my name is Mason Voss. I've been a swimmer on the Cordova Blue Marlins for eight seasons. I'm going to help my, read a statement my mom wrote in regards to the Hagen Pool. Right now, the park district has a pool consultant. The city has their own pool consultant. That means that both pool consultants are in competition with each other. That does not communicate working together, but working independently. My mom had a birthday on Monday, and my 10-year-old sister made her a three-layer cake with frosting. If she had made the cake but didn't add the frosting, it would have looked incomplete. I feel this is what our Hagen pool would be viewed as, an unfrosted cake. I want frosting. I wouldn't be so adamant about frosting except for the fact that it's available. The park district's four million plus the city's three million would make a fantastic comp combination that would, enhance, that would enhance our community. What is the next step? Is it an MOU? Is it a two by two? Is it going back to the planning phase? Please take the time and effort to take the next steps toward a modern facility that will be something to brag about. Thank you for listening to our concerns about the Hagen Pool. Thank you, Mason. Ms. Jones. Next, I'd like to call Ms. Mary Nessel to the podium. Following Ms. Nessel will be Ms. Isabel Lynch. Good evening, Ms. Nessel. Good evening. I'll watch my three minutes. <laughs> my job takes me all over the greater Sacramento area, and I work with families who all want to live in communities that have the best possible recreational facilities. The communities surrounding us, for example, Elk Grove, Folsom, West Sacramento, and Roseville, all have adequate swim centers that I think beat the pants off what is currently planned.